guys. Welcome to the Boom Tequila Podcast with your hosts. I'm Jody And I'm Erin. This week, we definitely have a good episode in store. We will be talking about some studies that came out showing a rise in the single lonely man. Now, if you've been on TikTok, you may have seen this. There have been some things going viral surrounding this topic as of late. These studies in particular have been a bit of a hot topic, I think, of interest for people. And so I wanted to kind of break them down and walk through what they say, what the findings were. But basically, there is an upward trend of men in particular finding it more difficult to find women willing to date and marry them. So we're going to look at what the data actually says, the reasons behind these shifts, you know, why maybe it is that men are struggling right now, why are maybe women choosing not to marry, and what are some things that could potentially remedy this dilemma? All right, before we dive too deep into our topic discussion, let's catch up. It's been a little bit longer this time because mm-hmm. we were off last week. Jody, what have you been up to? I've been traveling the whole United States. I've been everywhere. Um, actually, no, I really did. I went on my first plane ride with Aaron. It was really scary, but I loved it. I feel like the first time I almost got kind of nauseous a little bit. I'm like, okay, I just, I can't talk. I just have to sit here. Like it was kind of scary, but then I loved it and I'm ready to fly everywhere now. Like I'm, I just love it. It's so fun. <laughs> uh, we went to Miami, which was amazing. It's I mean, I don't know when people can listen to this later or whatever, but right now as we're recording, it's November and we're in the Midwest. So that was really nice to go down there and then come back to 30 degree weather. But yeah, um, I've been doing that. My son's really into trains and I built him a train room today. It's 75% done. So I'm kind of proud of that. And he loved it. So doing some more hair, getting ready for, we've got Friendsgiving coming up this weekend. But yeah, what about you? Honestly... Yeah, I feel like a lot getting ready for our Friendsgiving thing, which I have this drink that I had to make a sample of to see if it's good. It's good. It's really strong. I may have to bring some Sprite or something to make it a little more mild. I feel like it's mostly alcohol. That's that's okay. That's what we need right now. (laughs) You know, I don't mind, but the thing I don't like about strong drinks is, especially if they taste good, you, I feel like I go from zero to a hundred. Yeah. (laughs) I I don't Uh, see a problem. All of a sudden. So I don't know. We'll see. But all right. uh, Let's see. Dating update. Okay. Honestly, this area has been uh, a little less than stellar, a little disappointing. Recently, I had a, what would you call it? Like a major dumb bitch moment (laughs) and kind of got a little heartbroken over this guy that I wasn't even dating. Um, So, you know, love that for me. And otherwise, I feel like Honestly, it's just so hard to find men who are able to be assertive and take initiative. This is like a big struggle for me lately. I don't know if it's like something I'm doing that's like not attracting the right type of men or whatever. But for example, there's this guy who has liked me for a long time. We've never dated or anything. And he said something about liking me recently or wanting to hang out. And so I just told him, I was like, do you realize you've never actually asked me on a date? And he was like, well, what do you mean? And he was like, would you go? And I was like, maybe, but I want you to actually plan something, like take initiative, you know? Like show me if I'm matured a little bit, something, I don't know. Anyway, so then I told him dates that I was available. And what does this man do? Nothing. He sends me cycles of haze for a week, like for weeks with literally no conversational substance. And then asks me a general, want to go on a date? And honestly, like maybe I'm being petty here, but the energy, like it's just not there. Like it's giving nothing. It's giving the bare minimum is here. And he's like, I'm almost, I'm almost at the bare minimum. And I can't get it. He can't figure it out. Get there. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, ugh. It's just men. I don't even know. I know. I don't and know. I've and tried. Last... I've tried to help him. I've tried to help him and be like, dude, here's a little literal roadmap. Like, here's what you do. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. And I just, I felt like, which I won't go too deep into this, but I feel like a lot of guys don't understand the difference between assertive and passive aggressive. And they feel like because they're sometimes aggressive, they can't struggle with being assertive. And it's like, oh, please go to therapy. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, that was a little unhinged at the end. While my dating life might not be the best, fortunately, the rest of my life kind of is. (laughs) 
like Jody said, Jody and I were in Miami last week, which was so much fun. And we have our annual Friendsgiving coming up, which I am beyond excited for. We have the best friends, like literally this group of women it is fucking everything. Like they're amazing. Every single one of them. I love them. We're so and- lucky. I feel like it's really rare to even have one like good friendship as an adult, like in your thirties now. And we've got like, there's eight of us that, mm-hmm. like in our group. Yeah. Yeah. And so every year at our friends giving miss, what is that what it's called? Or just friends giving miss giving miss. Yeah, weird to say. (laughs) Anyways, we do a gift exchange and Jody and I got some fun gifts. Jody has kind of a tradition of like a certain theme she does every year. And I kind of got some fun things. So by the time this airs, uh, well, they'll already have their gifts. And so I thought we could go ahead and tell you about what we got for our Friendsgiving gifts. And if you want to see what I got, you'll have to watch the YouTube version because I'm not going to say it on the podcast, like the audio podcast. So, um, I'm not going to get mine because it's like wrapped up, but I'll tell you what mine is. So I'm kind of known, like I'll always get a few little things, but one of those is always a vibrator. I'll always get a vibrator because who doesn't love the gift of orgasms? Like let's, a lot of these girls are in relationships. Sometimes men can't do it, but the, your vibrator is always going to be there for you. So I thought by now we've been doing this a few years. They're kind of grown to expect that. So I kind of wanted to take it up a notch this year. And this year I actually got, it's called a sex machine and it comes with like 10 different attachments. And it actually like, it has suction cups where you can like set it on the ground. You can, it's pretty heavy. Like you can set it on your bed or whatever, and you can turn up how fast it goes or how slow it goes, (laughs) all different attachments. And it will do, you just lay back and relax and it'll do all the fucking for you. So um, I also got like some other cutesy, like little things to go with it. Um, but yeah, that's my kiss. Love the way you explained, Alice. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my gosh. And then So you're welcome, whoever gets that. My like a random exchange. Just... We don't get for specific people. It's just like a random, just in case. If one of our super vanilla friends gets it, sorry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that any of them really are. You don't think? Mm, no. I feel like they'd all like vibrators. Oh, well, I feel yeah, like this I mean, is going to be a little, a little much. but mine. But we'll <laughs> okay. So I think the first one that I'll show you guys that I got is just this fun. I'm going to open it. This one's just like, what girl doesn't love flowers? So <laughs> that's really fun. And then I've also been seeing that all the crystals and jewels and stuff like that are so in wow. right now, so trending. And so I found this fun little crystal set. There's three different, they're all pink, which like, how fun is this? And there's three, (laughs) three different ones and rings because who doesn't love rings? These are just really fun for our girly pops that want to kick it up a notch. It's just this little set. Really beautiful bracelets. It looks like. Yeah, it's, well, exactly. Yeah. And then Christmas time is coming up. So how fun are these little jingle bells? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how do they, are they like really, would it be painful? I haven't like tried them out. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> and then this, like, I feel like everybody needs one of these, you oh, know? Okay. Yeah. Just multi-purpose. You can use it for all kinds of things. You can. I love it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I want. I want yours. I want to get yours this year. <laughs> what a fun little intro today! Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, into our topic discussions. There was a study done by Pew Research showing how there are more single men now than there have been in times past. And this trend for single men is on the rise, which a lot of men are not very happy about this status or news. So what does the study actually tell us? Jody? you want to read the first uh, bullet? About four out of 10 adults in the U.S. between the ages of 25 and 54 are single and not living with a romantic partner. This is a significant increase from years past. Men are now more likely to be single than women, which was not the case years ago. 
While some of the unpartnered people are divorced or widowed, the rise in unpartnered people is tied to the increasing numbers of people who have never married. From 1990 to 2019, the number of people between the ages of 25 to 54 who have never been married jumped from 17 to 33 percent, almost double. Wow, that's a lot. In 1990, women and men were equally likely to be unpartnered, but by 2019, there was a shift showing that now men are more likely to be unpartnered than women. There are some economic factors that actually tie in here. Partnered people tend to make more money, and while the men's median income is more than that of women's unpartnered, married or partnered living together couples tend to make more money than unpartnered. But married men in particular make significantly more. Uh, married women also make a little more, but it's not as as big of a jump as married men. And in fact, there have been other studies that show that men are more likely to be promoted or receive raises when they are married or have children, while the burden of labor for those children might tend to fall more on the women Unfortunately, she is typically not receiving such promotions or raises. In fact, having children for a woman can actually have a negative impact on her career growth, but we digress. Men with higher IQs are more likely to get married, but women with higher IQs are less likely to marry. Men literally argue that women should not get educated because it compromises their ability to attract men. This was one of the most common and disturbing arguments that I saw, and like, I'll get into it later, but fuck. (laughs) Come on, guys. Mm. What? It's definitely frustrating to see all of these men talking about this and not one actually listening to the reasons that women aren't dating them or looking at what they can do to be better partners. Just so much shit advice telling men from men telling men to go to the gym. Like literally that was probably the biggest advice I saw. They're like, bro, you can't expect to check a hot girl. If you ain't got abs, get into the gym, bro. What do you like? Wow. (laughs) I promise you going to the fucking gym is not what we care about. Like at all. There are probably like a handful of girls that really care about their guy going to the gym and having a six pack. But in general, that is not going to be a make or break for whether or not you're able to be in a healthy, long lasting relationship. I feel like the younger generations maybe care more about stuff like that. Like the petty or things that instead of like over, I know me personally, like I cared more about looks than the personality when I was like in my early twenties. Yeah. So, but I feel like as you age and mature and realize what's important, the gym doesn't fucking matter. Like that's valid. be healthy and take care of yourself, but like, don't be a gym bro. Like that's, (laughs) That reminded me, my friend, I won't name her so that she might not want to be associated with this now. One of my friends from high school would say when she was talking about guys, she would be like, we would, we had this running joke that was like, what's the criteria? She's like, are you hot? Do you like to fuck? (laughs) But also I would think that that age that they care is not the age that they're looking to get married. And I think part of the problem, which we won't go too deep into, is that men wait until they're in their late 30s and beyond to think about wanting to settle down and getting married and they're wanting to settle down with women who don't have any children and are like in their early 20s and there's just a big Mm -hmm. well there's a lot of problems with that but yeah but they might not be wanting to get married Mm. all right Uh, so Jody what do you think might be some contributing factors to why there are increasing numbers of single lonely men. We're going to go into what the data says, but I kind of want to get Uh an idea of maybe what, just what you've observed. Um, I think on, it boils down to in a big way, social media, because I think on the men's side, I think men get this little thought in their head. That's like, well, I want to be the alpha male and women should be this way and do this and do that. And then one of them will make a TikTok about it or two of them will make a TikTok about it. And then all of a sudden you've got Andrew Taint and his followers and these alpha douchebags that are like, you know, obviously women don't find that attractive. Like that's not in. Okay. Also on the women's side of things, It also comes down to social media because you can see like we can stand up for ourselves. 
we don't have to go by the norm like our moms and grandmas did in the 50s and the 60s and like oh you have to everyone should be married by this age and have kids and do this and do that and obey your husband and shit and all that bullshit and I feel like it's opening our eyes to see that that's not like we can be happy and most of the time we're going to be happy by ourselves (laughs) instead of having someone you know try and control us and tell us what to do and what we can't do and it's just so yeah I think I think social media is opening up people's eyes and maybe closing the men's (laughs) yeah I think in short it comes down to men not I I I hate to use this kind of wording because I don't think it it resonates with men when you say things like men don't see women as humans because I don't think they understand the breakdown of what that actually means and it feels very abstract but I think that men tend to see women almost as a commodity like they see things like she's hot or she can cook or she can clean for me and almost like how we can what we can do for you and not um you know, something that's foundationally centered on an emotional connection and how we can both better each other's lives. I think a lot of it is men don't want to listen to women. You know, Mm -hmm. women are saying what we want. And I hear so much complaining and pushback from men of like, oh, all men want is a vagina. But women, they want this whole list of like, you got to be a sexologist and and a psychiatrist and this. And it's like, tell us you just don't want to put in any effort with and also that's part of the problem like if all you're looking for in a woman is a vagina like get a fucking sex toy yeah it's what (laughs) what can she do for me how can she take care of me it's it's like they view them as property not all men but all men you know I think it's I think it just goes deeper because I don't think a lot of men do it on purpose I think that our society sets them up And the patriarchy sets them up for failure. Like this idea that men have to be alpha males and can't show emotions. And, you know, it doesn't do, it it does a disservice to men in a lot of ways that sets them up for unfortunate things as they get older. Mm -hmm. I think what Jody said too, I was surprised you didn't say like, because we don't have to, because I know Jody said this before, so I'll say it. There's the financial stuff. Like it wasn't until the seventies that women were even allowed to have their own credit cards. So, you know, the fact, as soon as women don't, physically need and have to be in a relationship with a man to as a survival skill we don't want to and it's yeah Yeah. at that point I don't know I think some men struggle with like why wouldn't you want a guy to provide but I don't know to me that's scary the idea of solely relying because then if you want out you can't get out you know what I mean? Like I would never want to solely be so dependent on a man financially that I couldn't get out if I wanted to Anyways, do you want to tell us what the actual reasons were from the study? So what was determined to be the prominent underlying reasons for the trending increase in single men? A Psychology Today article analyzed this and broke it down into three reasons. Women expect more from men than they used to. There are more men than women on dating apps and men need to learn skills for healthy relationships. Number one, dating opportunities for heterosexual men are diminishing as relationship standards rise. Women are wanting men to be able to listen and communicate their feelings in a healthy way. They want men who are emotionally available and align with their values. Reason number two, men represent approximately 62% of dating app users, lowering their chances for matches. So there's a bit of a numbers game at play here. Women also tend to be more selective than men when choosing who they swipe right on. And the third one, men need to address skills deficits to meet healthier relationship expectations. Uh, Emotional connection is essential for a healthy, lasting relationship. Unfortunately, a lot of boys are not taught emotional intelligence skills, which leads to grown men who lack the ability to identify and communicate their feelings in healthy ways. And these things, these three things are not me and Jody saying this. These are what a male psychologist who analyzed this study that was done concluded the root causes of this are so I just wanted to throw that out there yeah Jody, do you think there might be other reasons that women seem to be maybe less motivated to partner up these days so maybe not necessarily on the men's side but why women just don't want to 
I know you're wanting more of like the women's, but it's oh, you can, if it's because of the of, men, I guess that is. <laughs> <laughs> it made me think of this meme that used to go around and I always thought it was a joke, but the older I get, the more I realize it's actually real. They used to say, it was say, um, men don't typically mature until they're in their like mid forties. And I remember people laughing at it and thinking it was like, but I really think that it's true. Like, I really think they don't reach full maturity until they're in their forties. And <laughs> Honestly, like, I think you hit like the nail on the head earlier when you said like, they don't want to because they don't have to, we don't have to anymore. And like, overall, if you want to, people are realizing if you want to be happy, then why have another like man child that you have to take care of, but also at the same time is telling you what you can and can't do. And it's just, why, why would you want to like in most cases, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah, no, it's true. I can think of like maybe one couple that I know, maybe two couples that I know that are like truly kind of have a, seem to have from the outside, at least a very ideal marriage. I also haven't really talked to them much recently, but I mean, assuming everything's still good, like, I don't know. It's yeah. For me, I think, I think a big one is that there is growing education and awareness about the fact that marriage benefits men far more than it benefits women. Women are often raised believing that marriage is the end goal, but at the end of the day, women are not the ones benefiting from it. There may be some financial advantages for marriage, but when it comes to caretaking, household labor, emotional support, women continue to carry the bulk of those burdens, all while now also working full-time jobs alongside their husbands. One thing that we didn't mention was the fact that women are increasingly becoming more educated than men, earning higher degrees and things like that. Uh, What we tend to see is that when men receive education and are ambitious in their careers, they have more dating prospects. But when women further their education and career ambitions, they tend to have more challenges in the dating world. Uh, There have been studies also done showing that the higher IQ a woman has, the less likely they are to marry. And side note, women statistically are earning degrees at a higher rate than men, which could also be a contributing factor to that gap. Um, In fact, I saw one when I was doing research for this episode, I saw several YouTube videos and articles addressing this. And I was so disappointed with the consistent feedback I saw from men saying that women are really doing themselves a disservice by becoming overeducated because men don't want to be with educated, high-earning women. In fact, one seemingly very popular guy even stated that being competent, this is a quote, being competent, building your career and finances is not something men want in a woman. He was talking about how women, you know, are going to be disappointed when they find out they've done all this work to build their career and it's not what men want. They didn't probably do it for men, but it's fine. Men were also saying things like the over success of women continues to accelerate. Women will have two choices, remain single or settle. The only advantage, this is what this one guy said, I'll tell you who it is at the end of this, but this is a quote. He was like, they'll have two choices to remain single or settle. The only advantage women have is that they have the option to settle. Men don't even have that opportunity. Um, That is a direct quote from Chris Williamson, who is apparently a very popular male YouTuber and speaks frequently on these topics, uh, or at least seems to be pretty popular with a lot of men. And I was just floored, like... I shouldn't be surprised, but it's so hard because I'm like, I know there are good quality men out there. I know there are men who care about women, who love women, who aren't shits, who aren't misogynists. I know there are, but man, they're hard to come by. They really are. And it's It's really hard when you keep getting slapped in the face with these misogynistic douche cabooshes. Yeah. Why? Why is that the only option? that women have at least the choice to settle. Like why is men doing better, growing, learning how to connect, or even just not caring as much if a woman makes more? Why are those not options? But it's true because as an ambitious woman who is single, I do see it. Like a lot of men, and they'll say things like it's intimidating or they don't, you know, whatever, like they've got their excuses, but it's just stupid. That's stupid. Men are men are stupid. Men are but not all men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, what do you God. think that women do want in marriage that might change things? 
I think people are wanting, if you're already happy with yourself, I think this would be ideal and this would make a lasting marriage. If you're already happy with yourself and you find someone that contributes to that, that doesn't, that, you know, I feel like too many, and I know I've said this multiple times on past episodes, but I feel like too many people rely on a relationship to make them happy. And I feel like something that would be good is if you find someone that is a stable, like emotionally healthy person that can just add to your life and your happiness. And like, you know, someone that can also take, is able to take care of themselves without you and just contributes to things, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think Mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, I guess my answer would be at the end of the day, personally, I want a relationship that's going to make my life better than it is as a single unpartnered person. So to me, that means someone who I emotionally connect with, who is able to also help me with things, uh, someone who's self-aware, able to communicate in a healthy way. In fact, I think it's a really huge turn on when a guy's able to be assertive and communicate about topics like that deeper subject matter or more mature topics like actually wanting to communicate about sex and things like that i'd also love to find someone who is secure enough to handle my goals whether that be because they're also really ambitious or they're just secure enough that that's not an issue for them i think a lot of men are brought up with this idea that the man has to be the provider and that's how it is so if a woman they're dating makes more than them or is ambitious they kind of in turn feel inferior because they're not able to provide in the way that they think they should as a man. And ultimately, that is a real challenge because I think that men have to be able to bring more to the table than just having a job. I mean, honestly, like the number of online dating profiles that I see where the only thing it says is got a job (sighs) is alarming. And so that anyways, but yeah, that is a challenge because I think a lot of guys see that as their one thing that they should bring to a relationship. And if you don't need that, they don't feel like they have anything to offer. So, um, yeah, that sucks. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, so the first part though would be what I do want. And I don't think that's asking too much. It's just, I I also don't know how realistic it is. Yeah. Hmm. Jody, one complaint that I consistently saw from men is that women are asking them to do more, but. What, what, what are women bringing to the table? You know, they want us to do all this shit. What are they going to, what are they bringing? What are your thoughts? Um, I feel like in, you know, every, every situation, every relationship and person is different, but I feel like in general, what women are wanting from men is just stability and emotional maturity. And like you had said, like just being self-aware and I just feel like being able to communicate well, um, And be like I said, be able to take care of themselves. And what are women bringing to the table? Well, nothing. They want to take their table away. Like they don't want the men anymore. We don't want them. We just don't. (laughs) We're We're taking the table. We stopped bringing stuff to the table. Yes. Oh my gosh. No, Um, you can have the table. We're not bringing our stuff to it anymore. (laughs) I kind of love that. One of our friends shared, like it was like one of those quotes on Facebook recently, but it said that people cannot communicate more than they are self-aware. And I thought that was like such a huge, like I'd never thought of it that way, Mm. but I was like, that's such a good point because self-awareness is not a skill that comes overnight. And for me, it was very much tied to therapy and learning skills about being assertive and setting boundaries. And it is a process. And I just, yeah, I guess I'll just reiterate that I wish more men would go to therapy. Um, (laughs) My thoughts on what women, sorry, I'm like so many rabbit trails, uh, what women bring to the table. My thoughts are honestly that women are asking men to step up because they are already bringing more to the table. And honestly, we're so sick of carrying the majority of the weight that our lives are actually easier single than partnered. I know this is true for myself. I would love to meet someone where this is not the case, but so far... (laughs) <laughs> you know, I remember when I broke up with my son's father and this was years ago, I was so worried that doing it on my own, like, how was I going to manage and like, you know, all of that. But I was shocked to find that life was actually a lot easier because now instead of taking care of myself, my child and a grown man, I just had myself and child to care for. We don't want to mother our partners. 
I don't. Maybe some people are into that. It's not for me. We want someone that can meet us where we're at and actually contribute to the relationship also. So that's what I would say. I would say women are already bringing everything to the table. Mm -hmm. We just want someone who can meet us where we're at. Yeah. Um, we're just at a point where if you can't make the cut, we'd rather be single. So do better. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. do you feel like you bring to the table specifically in a relationship? And are you expecting more or less from a man? I don't bring anything. I'm not coming to the table. No, no, no. But like, <laughs> no, in, no, I'm just but you're married. So like, you. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just kidding. Um. So what do I bring? I mean, oh my God. I could tell you, you do everything. I like, I. <laughs> I'm not going to put everything out there, but <laughs> <laughs> that makes me want to know what you thought of that you can't say. Oh, I will tell you, Jody is one of the best homekeepers that I have. Like literally Martha Stewart, this bitch, you go into her house. It is cozy. It is clean. It smells like heaven. Um, she's just, she's perfection. And, um, I don't know any man that is on that level. So Girl, you should have seen my house when I got back from Miami. And he cleaned. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh my yeah, that's um, what I said. On my end, I would say that I I don't expect more out of a man than what I feel I can offer. I have a career. I've been to therapy. And I'm able to communicate in ways that are healthy I'm really loyal and nurturing. Like literally I would give anything, do anything for people that I love and care about. Like, I just want everyone to be happy and okay. I want to be a safe place for people if they feel like they need help or want to talk. And I love pampering people, just like making them feel good. Like I can, I can give a good massage too. So, you know, I don't know. I do feel like I bring a lot to the table and I don't think it's bad to expect a lot out of someone that doesn't mean they have to have all those same things but like you have to be able to also bring things other Something. than having a job <laughs> that wraps up our questions so now it's time for joe jam which we're never going to rename this is the section where we give you music to uh new music or just like music to check out jody what do you have this week um uh, mine is not new it's probably like five six years ago I don't know how I found it but I really like it it's been on repeat it is Niall Horan and the song is called too much to ask and I just really like it awesome what about you and Taylor I Swift have... again what Taylor Swift again no it's not I thought about it but I was like y'all are gonna get sick everybody's like I feel like she's so everywhere you're already listening to her yeah better be no, I'm just kidding that was really <laughs> psycho why did I say it like that Anyways, no, but yeah, did you um, see, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you, but did you see uh, the tickets are like three grand or something for her concert? I don't know if that's true. I didn't and, look, but I just like saw a video about them. it. Like the Swifties are insane. I didn't even try. Like I would love to go to a Taylor Swift concert. That'd be a great date. If somebody yeah. wants to buy me $3,000 Taylor Swift ticket. Listen. So I wouldn't even want to accept that kind of a date because like, um, I'll take them. Like that. She won't, but I I'll take them. I don't em. want whatever the reciprocity expectation is on <laughs> right. that date. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm sorry. What? What's your? What's okay, your? Okay, so we often try to throw out bands um, that we have met or that we've known. Um, and so this one I wanted to highlight. Uh, it is called the band is called the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden. They're on iTunes and Spotify. And this particular song is called Catch Me If You Can. It did come out a couple years ago, but they are indie rock with influences like Led Zeppelin, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles. So if you're if that's your thing, like definitely check it out. And they, I don't know, I haven't met all of them, but the drummer of the band is the bro like one of my really good friends from high school. It's her brother, and Jody and I go to Nashville all the time. So like, um. We have to see them perform because they recently moved down to Nashville. And so they're like touring and everything. And they're really good. You should check them out. And yeah, the Garden of Eden is the name. Nice. All right. Now our last and sexiest section. You know what that means? It's time to dish bish. You better dish bish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for Dish Bish today, we have a little game of pick one. Yes. Now, these start off mild and get progressively more sexual. So, oh my God. <laughs> you ready? Yes. Jody, pick one. Someone who cooks everything for you or cleans everything for you? 
Um, I'm going to say cooks because I'm not a great, like I'm an okay cook, but I'm not great. And no one cleans like I like things clean. So I would rather just do that myself. What about you? I was, I was going to say the opposite. I would say someone who cleans for me because I like cooking. I'm really good at organizing and stuff, but cook, cleaning takes so much more time and time mm-hmm. is money. <laughs> and cooking, if you didn't have to clean up the kitchen after anything, like I'd be cooking a lot more. Uh, yeah. I would want someone who cleans everything. I like that. You know what? You are really good at organizing. I was organizing a cabinet that had like all my old high school yearbooks and notes and stuff the other day. And it, I just got to a point where I was really overwhelmed. And I thought, God, I wish Aaron was here because I feel like I get to that point where I'm like, I don't know where to go or what to do. Yeah. And you're like, I got this. And I'm very like chaotic when it comes to like cleaning and general, like my house is not ever as spotless as Jody's house, but like I can organize the shit out of something. Yes. <laughs> but like, <laughs> see if I lived in town, I could just be like, I'll come over doing nothing. Yeah. All right. Would you rather publish your diary or make a movie about your life? Hmm. Di- no, no, no. Movie. Movie. I would say movie. Diary is too many. You have a details. lot of stuff. I would like, want to watch a movie about go. your life too. You would want to watch one? Yeah. And I would want to help make sure you get certain things in there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Pick one. <laughs> never get angry or never get jealous. Never get jealous. Same. Because I feel like jealousy is rooted in insecurity. Yeah. And anger is sometimes justified. I feel like that's normal. Yeah. And jealous, like sometimes it's over, like it's always stupid things. Like who cares? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we're starting to get into the, whatever, the, the next level. <laughs> uh, pick one really loud sex or totally silent. Is it like forever all the time or like your answer because, can be whatever you want. I mean, I feel like loud's more fun, but like if you're in a setting where other people like family members or something could hear you maybe silent I totally agree I was gonna say the same thing I was like <laughs> if if like there's other people in the house yeah silent yeah but if not if not loud like I would rather be loud. it's more fun yeah you know mm-hmm. um okay blindfold or handcuffs blindfold I'm too controlling like I gotta I gotta mm-mm blindfold you gotta have your hands yeah I gotta have my hands I feel like I I would just get irritated with handcuffs (laughs) (laughs) like I'm just pissed off now I'm not nothing's gonna happen (laughs) oh my gosh that's so funny (laughs) I would say um both no I'm just kidding (laughs) um if I had no I'd say blindfold between the two also Mm -hmm. so okay um your partner can okay pick one your partner can only use their hands or mouth during foreplay I'm gonna say hands because you got two so you can do more yeah yeah exactly (laughs) that um no I would say hands too I would also say this depends on what you call foreplay because I think a lot of people consider foreplay like anything that happens outside of penetration but I also feel like that's kind of that shouldn't be considered the foreplay that should be considered like part of sex Mm -hmm. is more than just penetration you know and so I feel like that's like saying I'm not a football, so maybe so this might be a sucky analogy, but that's like calling the first quarter pre-gaming. <laughs> okay, know? yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm I'll say hands. Whatever. Okay. Last one, pick one. Give five blowjobs per day or have anal sex once every couple months. Five? Five a day. Anal sex. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try it. You? You're gonna be, you're gonna be trying it every couple months. <laughs> <laughs> like your jaw would hurt after a while like mm. like I'm yeah. I'm not opposed to like bow jobs but five a right. day every no like day every off. day what if you what if you get COVID right <laughs> it's too much pressure yeah that's so many yeah no I would just do anal <laughs> okay oh. on that lovely note I hope you guys had a good time and follow us on YouTube TikTok Instagram, Instagram. Facebook, Facebook group. group is the best, the best place because <laughs> we go live there and we like connect with you more. Our other socials where, you know, like on Instagram, we kind of just post our episodes and stories here and there. TikTok, we post all of the stuff that's too nasty to post on our <laughs> personal pages. <laughs> so it's kind of a shit show over there. And YouTube, you can 
watch our beautiful faces while we talk <laughs> and hear the uncut versions of anything that was too raunchy or just annoying. Like sometimes I hear myself and I'm like, I'm, you're an annoying bitch. Cut that. Um, and the YouTubers get to hear it. So sexy. Yeah. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>